Are you taking B12 injections and wondering, is my cyanocobalamin B12 injection poisonous? My name is Dr. Tara Nellett, and in this video, we're going to look at different types of B12 and specifically the cyanocobalamin molecule, how it may be poisonous or problematic for you, and also the other side of it when it's probably not a problem. Again, my name is Dr. Tara Nellett, and if you're new to this channel, I just want you to know that I make these videos to help you go beyond the basics of your health, whether it's a confusing lab test, symptom, or diagnosis, and make these videos to help you get a better understanding of what's going on with your health. So if you like this kind of information on nutrition, health hormone optimization, click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this one. Now for a quick disclaim, the information contained in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not intended as treatment for any medical condition or a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or medical professional. It should be used as an educational guide to deepen your understanding of your own health and treatment success. If medical attention is needed, don't delay in seeking that attention. All right, let's look at this topic. Is cyanocobalamin poisonous? So there's a few different types of B12, but the most commonly used is cyanocobalamin. So I wanted to look at this question because many people do use cyanocobalamin and ask this question, is cyanocobalamin poisonous? Cyanocobalamin does contain a small amount of cyanide, and some people get worried when they find that out, and probably they should because cyanide is very toxic. Now, while cyanocobalamin is generally considered very safe, and many people do take it without any adverse problems, it does contain the cyanide, which is a toxic substance. It is difficult to estimate how much cyanide is in each injection, and we are going to kind of look at it from an injection standpoint. But just as a general exercise, we can do some estimations to get a rough idea of like how toxic or poisonous could it actually be. All right, so the most common dose of B12, whether it's cyanocobalamin or any other cobalamin, is about 1,000 micrograms. Sometimes you'll do that once a week, maybe a little bit more in the beginning, and then as you go on, usually about once a month. So if you're doing a 1,000 micrograms, which is about 1 ml a week, how much cyanide are you actually getting? The first thing to note about cyanocobalamin is it's a very stable structure. That cyanide molecule is bound to the cobalamin molecule very tightly. So in order for you to get cyanide, it has to dissociate. And this is going to happen when that cyanocobalamin is converted into methylcobalamin or hydroxycobalamin or adenosylcobalamin, all of which are more functional forms of the vitamin B12 molecule. So once that cyanocobalamin dissociates, you still have the cyanide molecule there, which can then attach to a potassium or a sodium molecule. So for every thousand micrograms of cyanobalamin, you might yield about one microgram of cyanide. So this is, again, something you might do once a month or from the high end once a week, but cyanide is usually going to be toxic in the several milligram. So you have a very small amount that you're going to yield from your injection, which is maybe one microgram versus several milligrams on the, on the side of an actual toxic or or major detrimental dose. When you get up to like 100 milligrams, that's what's going to be lethal. Some estimates would be a little bit less, but of course it does depend on your size, the administration of it, and other susceptibility factors that you might have. All this to say that it's actually pretty hard to get a toxic effect from cyanocobalamin. Part of that is because only small amounts are yielded of cyanide for each injection, and it's also a very stable molecule. Now, you might say to yourself, well, I don't really care if it's a small amount of poison. I don't want any poison in my body. And that's definitely a fair assessment as well, especially if you're in a more compromised health state. Most of the time when our health is compromised, it's coming from problems within the mitochondria, and in particular with cytochrome C and other parts of the electron transport chain. Well, cyanide is particularly toxic to cytochrome C and the whole electron transport chain. So if you're having health problems, you're probably having mitochondrial problems, and this is not going to help that situation. In addition, most of us do have the ability to eliminate 
cyanide in small amounts when they're small amounts at a time, and therefore it gets eliminated before it causes any problems. But in people that are in a more compromised health state, part of the problem is with toxic overload, their detoxification systems are taxed or overrun. The cells, tissues, and mitochondria are not able to eliminate even small amounts of toxins like cyanide when they're already overloaded. So in a case like that, even small amount of cyanocobalamin might be problematic for someone. So now back to our question, is cyanocobalamin poisonous? Well, I think it depends on what we mean by poisonous. There's certainly no instance where I can think of where cyanocobalamin as an injection to support your overall B vitamin status would actually be lethal or majorly problematic to your health. There are certainly cases in patients where I would think adding something like this could be more compromising to their health because they have problems with their mitochondria or electron transport chain. On the other hand, if you're really deficient in B12 and all you have is cyanobalmin and no other options, well, the benefits are definitely going to outweigh the risks there because ongoing low B12 levels is going to compromise other parts of your body, such as your nerves. And if it goes on for too long, the damage to those tissues may not be recoverable. So all in all, I think for most people, not taking the B12 in the form of cyanocobalamin can cause more problems than taking it. And I think that's the case for the vast majority of people. So how'd I do? Did that help you better understand this question? Is saying a cabalamin and poisonous? Hopefully it does. If you do have follow-up questions on this topic, drop it in the comment section. Happy to answer your question. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.